This is a circle at the moment, but I'm about to make it into a sphere. So... Look, ta-da! It's a sphere! Okay, I can do this a lot better with a pencil than with a, um, than with a whiteboard marker, but you get the idea. Depends on where the light angles. Exactly, it's all about that. Now, at the moment, we're focusing on surface area, surface area, just like we did with the cylinder. So you might recall, for a cylinder, you needed two measurements, right? To know how wide the cylinder is, so that's the radius. And then you need to know how tall the cylinder is, that's the height. height. Very good, okay? So, radius and height. But when you have a look at a sphere, when you have a look at a sphere, what measurement is it that tells us how wide it is? It's the radius, right? But then when you think about how tall it is, well, that's the same, right? That's the whole idea of a sphere, no matter which way you turn it, it's going to be the same. So therefore, around here, let's draw a circle. Actually, I'll choose a different color. That goes around, like, I guess the equator of the sphere. Okay, so what I've got here is the largest circle that can be made all the way around. So it's kind of like the equator. Uh, this has a special name, by the way, which we're going to explore a little more next year. It's called a great circle, uh, as opposed to a small circle. For example, if, we, if this were actually the globe, right? Um, you've got up the top here the Arctic and you've got the Antarctic. Have you heard of the Arctic Circle? You've yeah. heard of that phrase before, yeah. right? So the Arctic Circle is a circle up here that when you're above there, you're in the Arctic, right? Well, that circle is a lot smaller up here than the equator is. Does that make sense? So this is the biggest circle I can make. Now when you have a look at this great circle, in fact we might even label it great circle. It's fantastic. The radius of the great circle is the radius of the sphere. Okay. So actually my sense is a little bit off. Once you know the radius of the sphere, the surface area is really, really simple. The surface area is very closely connected to the area of a circle. What's the area of a circle again? Pi r squared. The surface area of a sphere with the same radius is 4 pi r squared. That's it. Okay. Now, as I have um, said to you before when we did measurement earlier and when we had a look at the cylinder this week, um, I think one of my goals is for you not just to know what is right, but to feel that it's right. Now, I'm actually really cross because um, I, I made this early this week. Oh and literally, God. 10 minutes ago as I walked up here, a year 10 boy ran into me and put oh. a big dent in it, or a few big dents in it, actually. But um, anyhow, it wasn't that good to start with. As you can see, it's a bit pointy. So we'll just work with it. So here's my sphere. Yeah. Okay, here's my sphere. Now, if you look closely, I mean, this is the, the hardest part when I was... I was joining this together for a bunch of sections and then uh, I glued all the insides together and then when I get to the last one, it was hard so I, I taped it. So it's a bit shoddy, but I want to show you, when you take a 3D shape and you look at the surface of it and you unfold it until it's flat, right? what do we call that? It starts with an N. A net, very good. So I'm going to show you the net for this shape. The net looks like this. Okay. So here is the net and in fact, if you look closely, you can still see you can still see where those horizontal lines are and how they correspond here. There are nine of them. We could have made more, but it would have meant more taping. Okay. So this, when you glue everything together, turns into this, right? Now you're like, mm, is that four pi r squared? Now it doesn't look very obvious from here because pi r squared is about circles, right? So I went one step better. I took the same net and then I cut it apart. Okay. Now this is up this way. This is these nine pieces and I've sliced them into lots and lots of little sections and please don't ask me how long this took because it took far too long. And this is the four pi r squared that comes from these once you cut them apart. So can you see? I think you just like Can you see? Circle, right? Great circle. Do you see it, right? So this goes around the equator as it were, if I, if I put it flat, okay? But um, the wonderful thing about it is you can view it from any angle and it's the same great circle. Okay. So 4 pi r squared, I hope when you sort of go to the, um, the formula sheet you think, okay, well this is the thing I'm going for. I hope this is the image that comes into your mind, because um, I laminated it, so I might stick it up somewhere, even though this is not even a room, just so it's a mental visual cue for you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, why not? Then this is better, right? Okay, so it's a really simple idea. That's, that's kind of it. So I want you to have a go at using it. Just before you do do that, 
Um, a very closely related shape, you'll need to draw this with me. Um, closely related to a sphere is half a sphere. What do we call half a sphere? Hemisphere. A hemisphere, right? So can you draw one of those underneath <laughs> this? Yeah, semi-sphere would be like, well, it's a semi-circle, right? So that seems like a natural uh, name to use. But no. Now, <laughs> you can see here, I sliced my sphere in half. It's a rice bowl. It's a, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to view this as a solid, so it's not hollow underneath. Okay. So I've got the same radius here. Now, what might be the surface area of this thing? Hmm. Okay, so just like with the cylinder, we've got a curvy part, and that's going to be, well, we sliced it in half. So the surface area is going to start with 2 pi r squared. That's the curvy part on the outside. But by slicing it oh across the middle, pi. you've made a new area that's this flat part, right? Pi but that's just pi r squared. Do you agree? Okay. So therefore, there's the flat part, yeah? So you've got the curved bit, you've got the flat bit, maybe you want to label them like so. So the surface area of this, if you include the part that we've cut off, is going to be 3 pi r squared. Do you agree? Now, all of these different combinations of like slice it across, maybe you want to have like a, a hollow one. If it were hollow, if this were actually a bowl, then you're going to have the outer curved part, and then you've got the inner curved part. Do you agree? They should both be the same if it's like, you know, like my, um, my sphere of paper, so it's like infinitely thin, so the inside and the outside are the same. So if that were the case, if I slice, slice it off, hollowed it out, what would be the inside and outside surface area? You're going to get this on the outside, but then you're going to get this again on the inside. So it's going to be 4 pi r squared, right? The difference is that this is all on the outside, whereas if I cut it off, hollowed it out, there'd be inside and outside. Does that make sense? So read the question carefully so that you can see, all right, is this thing solid? Do they want the flat bit? Do they just want the curved bit? Which part are they referring to?